This lecture will look at voting schemes a little more closely, and uh, the main message of this uh, segment will be that even very reasonable sounding voting schemes can run into problems. And we'll do it by a series of examples. Uh, we'll look at situation. I'll ask you to pause the video and think about the situation, and then we'll and to continue when you're ready. So let's get uh, let's get started. Let's start with the Condorcet, Condorcet uh, condition, uh, which on the face of it is um, uh, in, in, in con uh, incontrovertible. And uh, consider the following examples. So here we are, we have a thousand agents, and um, and here are the preferences. So for example, 499 of them prefer A to B to C, and so on for the others. Um, first question is, uh, not every voting situation has a Condorcet winner. Does this one have? So it's a good time for you to pause the video and think about it. Well, um, the answer is yes. Um, there is a Condorcet winner, and it's B. And why is that? Well, let's look at the relative preference of B to A and the relative preference of B to C. Well, we have here that 501 of the agents prefer B to A, and 502 of the agents prefer B to C. So clearly B is a Condorcet winner. Well, that, so where, where's the problem? Well, now think about the simplest uh, sort of voting we're familiar with, plurality voting. Everybody uh, votes for their top candidate. Uh, who would win the plurality voting here? Well, um, you, again, you could pause the video, or in this case, uh, it's fairly straightforward, right? Clearly, A would win it because uh, 499 agents would uh, vote for A, uh, and the next highest number would be a C with 498. So um, plurality voting doesn't give you the candidate that on the face of it is the uh, clear, uh, should be the clear winner. Uh, what about uh, voting uh, plurality with uh, elimination? So this might take a little more time to think about. So you might want to pause the video here just for a second. And uh, now when you think about it, you see that C would be the winner under plurality with elimination. And, and why is that? Well, uh, you'd first um, run a um, plurality, and you'll see that B is the loser. So B would leave the competition, if you wish. And now it'll be head-to-head -head between C and A. And in this case, C would be the winner because uh, 501 out of the uh, 1,000 agents prefer C to A. So C would be the winner. And so two voting schemes, both of them on the face of it, reasonable, would give you different answers. And both answers different from the criterion that on the face of it seems quite a safe criterion, namely the Condorcet condition. So here's another example. And um, let's think about what would happen uh, in this case. Um, what would happen under plurality voting? Well, uh, clearly uh, under plurality voting, uh, A would win, since uh, A would get 35 uh, votes, and the second highest would be B with 33. What would happen under the uh, board of voting? This takes a little more thinking, and you might want to pause just for a second the video. But when you continue, uh, by that time, you'll quickly realize that, again, A would be the winner under Borda. And uh, clearly, uh, you, you have uh, A, B, and C each uh, appearing in each of the places, one, two, and three, with A appearing uh, with the largest number of agents in the higher uh, locations. So A would have the highest board account and would be the winner too. So this looks very good. But now what happens uh, if uh, C drops out? So C realizes that he has no, no, no chance of winning the election and drops out. 
Now what would happen under the both uh, plurality and border? Just You might want to pause for a second the video and think about it. And when you do, you realize that in both cases, B would win. And so here you have a candidate that has no ch chance of, of, of winning and his sole uh, role, if you wish, is to change what otherwise would be the outcome of the elections. Here is another peculiarity of, of voting schemes. And imagine that we're doing pairwise elimination. That is, we're going to take one candidate, compare him to another, take the winner, comparing to a third, and so on and so forth. So the order in which we uh, compare the candidates, we call that the agenda. So somebody needs to set the agenda, we call that uh, person, uh, the agenda setter. So imagine pairwise elimination with the order of comparison A, B, C. In other words, A will be compared to B, and then B will be compared to C. So who would be the winner of this election? A good time to pause the video and think about it. And once you do, you realize that C would be the winner. Because when A is compared to B, well, uh, we have B preferred to A by a majority of the agents, so A would be eliminated. And then when uh, the winner, namely B, is compared to C, you'll see that C is preferred to B by the majority of the agent, and therefore C will be the winner of this uh, election with this ordering. What happens with another ordering like ACB? Again, you might want to pause the video, and when we, by the time we resume, you'll realize that in this case B would be the winner. And perhaps not surprisingly, when you ask about the third ordering BCA, you'll see that A would be the order, uh, the winner then. And so it's a little perhaps disconcerting that a the same voting scheme merely by deciding on the order in which you run it will lead to very different results. And here is another example. There are three agents and four candidates, uh, and the preferences are as written uh, up there. Now, consider again pairwise elimination with the ABCD ordering. And uh, what would you get? Again, pause the video for a second, think about it and realize that the winner would be D. What about, um, what about this case? Um, we're now not talking about different orderings. We're talking about a given ordering and an outcome. But there's something a little troubling about this outcome. What is it? Pause the video, think about it and realize that the problem is that everyone prefers B to D here, right? So B is preferred to D here, B is preferred to D here, and B is preferred to D here, and yet D, this Pareto-dominated candidate, wins. So something is wrong in this picture. Well, um, the goal here was not to give us the final answer about what is the right way to vote. In fact, that is not well defined. Uh, the goal was to alert us to that, uh, the fact that a lot of reasonable sounding uh, voting schemes can, can be problematic. And so with this note of caution, we'll finish this segment.